live from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. This is your motivational, sensational, inspirational, educational, aspirational, international, keenly awaited, daily created, highly anticipated edition of the afternoon swing trading floor. With your humble host, Jeremy Alexander Newsom, with another daily dose of mentally delicious brain food, reminding each of you to love life, live life, and trade it. Folks from around the world, how are each and every one of you beautiful human beings doing on this gorgeous day? Um, this is the spy that we have up, and right now, this wick on the spy is not entirely accurate. It's showing a long lower shadow, but it's not there. So I will pull up the uh, handy dandy trend spider and we will just simply kind of get an idea of what that looks like on the daily chart on that program. But realistically, today was a beautiful bullish day out there in the markets. It was a really nice day, solid move. And a lot of people made some good money on swing trades and some great money on day trades. Now Brad did very well from a day trading perspective. Blake did really well on a day trading perspective. A few other people, I think Tracy made some money on a day trading perspective. Angela did really well on Roku. Brad Rungi did well. Felicia did well. A lot of traders did exceptional today, which was beautiful. Oh, that's cool. That one over there is working. All right, great. So again, just to look at the daily chart, I don't think this charting software will have any massive lower shadow, um, or at least it specifically shouldn't. There it goes. Oh, it does too. All right, cool. So uh, yeah, SPY, that little shadow, interesting kind of a move, but um, you know, realistically not that bad of a deal. We just know that it's not there, but it is a strong gap on the SPY. So if I just go to an hourly chart, this is really where you get an idea of how strong this gap was. Uh, again, easily could retest, and uh, thank you very much, Stephen. So it could easily retest, easily pull back, but it would be a dip buyable event, right? So this is the hourly chart on the SPY, and I'm all about a little bit of a dip buy at this particular point. I mean, this is a gorgeous little move, very, very pretty. Charles Marks says, hey, everyone. <laughs> So Charles must be in the car on the way to the airport tuning in. I like that dedication. Marion, how are you, buddy? Thanks so much for being here. Bill says, afternoon. Jill's doing great, which is exciting news. So yes, the SPY, nice little gap. But really, we could go over here to the Qs and get a little bit better of an idea of what this looks like. Uh, what I was actually talking about yesterday, if you guys remember, is I was discussing just yesterday how the broader markets would either have a big breakout and just keep running or have a pretty nice retest. And I don't know which one it's going to do, unfortunately, but I can tell you that if it does have a retest, this is a beautiful retest gap. And it'll, pretty be, it'll be a decently deep retest, I would assume. Um, in red is a possibility. In light blue, this would be another possibility. But the retest will be relatively deep on the broader markets. We could even get it tomorrow or the next day or the next two or three days, I don't know. But just looking at it presently, uh, just trying to keep an eye on, see what it's going to do. But looks good. Here's the long-term moving averages on the Qs. Long-term moving averages look nice. And again, as I mentioned, I still do think we make new all-time highs on the market. I've been saying that for the last few weeks. And once we make a new all-time high, you know, so maybe something like this and something like this, that's going to be a great spot to lock in some gains. And we can expect to have a pretty decent little drop at that point and then that will be again a good dip buying opportunity so there's going to be some money to be made out there on the bullish moves of the market so let's go check out this dow jones etf ladies and gentlemen the dia was putting in work up 1.39 percent a little bit of an upper shadow small sell-off and again tomorrow depending on how we gap down if we do gap down tomorrow, I can imagine, since you had some you know, sellers at the end of the day, I can imagine that we get a little bit of a retest, and then again, probably some trade back down into this gap. But bigger picture, you gotta like this move. At least I do. Uh, again, not a new all-time high yet on the down, but we are awfully close. Here's the IWM, and the IWM, which is the Russell ETF, again, also looks really nice. 
Here's the weekly chart. That also looks nice. We're just kind of trading sideways. Really good index for some put sales. I know a lot of people have done that in the past, right? Buy low, sell high, buy the dip, all that kind of good stuff. That's what's happening on the IWM right now. That's kind of what we got. And overall, it does look pretty delicious. Just to trade sideways, but be more bullish than bearish. So we have a lot of stocks to look at today. We have a lot to cover. These are the requests, and these are some other stocks I noted would be an interest of today. We'll check some out and also look at some swing trades that we have. Um, first of all, I figure we'll just dive into the swing trade that we hit our target on today, which was Weight Watchers. So let's start there. We did not have to wait very long for this trade to work out, but this is the daily chart. And the target almost getting out at the exact high. The exact high was 33.25, but this was a nice 1.37 R gain, and we got that really early in the morning, so not too bad. This was the 50 EMA on a weekly chart, and as you just noticed, that 200 simple uh, is not very far away, so the 200 simple moving average is 34.65 on Weight Watchers. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. That was the trade. I told Blake, it's actually kind of dumb and also semi-funny at the same time, but I was like, man, looking over this trade, I was like, I really feel like I could have gotten in here. <laughs> so I think I could have like shaved off six cents of this entry, but you know, that's, that's the perfectionist in all of us. We always want to get a little bit better. Um, anyway, really good trade. 1.37 R's in the bank on Weight Watchers. Nicely done. All right, so next is Slack, ticker symbol W-O-R-K. And I did mention yesterday that this would be a very strong gap and go, and I thought it would be. Um, I watched it a lot this morning. This is the five minute chart on Slack, and the very, very first candle was a bearish candle with a shaved top, and then you add, uh, sorry, not a shaved top, I apologize, a shaved bottom. Tons of volume, and then it immediately like tweezer bottomed out of here. Right off of 26, storm troopered higher, retested, and then broke above resistance with a good close here. And ever since then, it was just straight up fade town. So bullish fade town, really strong move. And uh, once it filled the gap, literally filled the gap pretty much to the penny right here, and then just trade sideways for the rest of the day. So now the question is, what do we do on Slack? I mean, if you're playing it bullish, it doesn't look awful. Uh, this is a nice little bullish candle. Some volume is coming in. So what I can do on Slack is throw in uh, some support. So I will throw in a support line on Slack. There we go. First support line. Ooh, it's a gross color. What's a good color? What do you guys think? No. Um... Let's do like a forest green. I haven't really repped that color that much recently. All right, so a little bit of a support line here, and uh, let's get Mr. Squiggles to try to find out what he thinks is going to happen on Slack, which would most likely be something like this. Uh, if you're going to play a bullish, you'd probably look for a little bit of a pullback and then a dip buying opportunity. I think I'm going to wait on it a little bit, but I will give it a few days or weeks just to see what occurs on WORK. All right. We had a lot of discussion about electronic arts over the last two or three days. And I talked about this trade yesterday and the low of today was 96.56. And we talked about an entry at 96.52. So that wouldn't have triggered if you did do that exact entry. This is the weekly chart and the weekly chart 200 simple is actually 96.63. So we're talking about some decent areas of support. The high of this candle is 96.30. Um, so if we're talking about getting in bullish, I mean, I'd probably want a little bit more of a pullback. There wouldn't be a lot more, something like this, and something like this. So I, I prefer EA on a longer term trade. And so I'm not gonna do this as an official setup. Um, this is what would make the most sense to me. But that's a large stop. That's like five bucks. So that's pretty massive. I mean, if you had a, a trigger for a protective put, that's fine. 
So that's how I would play EA games personally. I'd like it more just on a little bit of a longer term scale, uh, longer term scale being kind of more of an investment approach rather than specifically a swing trade. I'm not saying it's a bad swing trade. I'm just saying that uh, I think we can find something a little bit better. Unless you're doing like put sales or bull put spread, that's fine. And I do, I really do like this daily chart. I mean, this, this looks nice. I'm not saying that I couldn't swing trade it. Uh, if I was on like my buddy Zach, if I was on his time frame where I could hold this trade for a few weeks or months and wouldn't really specifically care about it, that'd be more of a more of a realistic approach. But you know, if you're doing like bill paying money, uh, I'm gonna wait on EA. Okay. Next on the list is VMW. Not BMW, but VMW and VMware was up today. Very nice retest gap. Um, my buddy Philip was looking for some stocks for some homework on some back trading. So here you go, Philip. VMware today, back trade that bad boy. Um, nice little gap up, really good retest. You had a bunch of white candles in a row. Boom, 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 boom. And then we gapped up today and we retested. So VMware, big company doing a lot of buyouts recently. They have one or two acquisitions under their belt. And I was, <laughs> I was about to say vividly, I remember the stock being $50, $60 a share like it was yesterday. And by yesterday, I mean, that was 2016. So it wasn't that long ago. Look at that inverted head and shoulders pattern. I feel like even JL could have taken that trade. Um, just a really nice uh, inverted head and shoulders pattern. You know, boom, boom, boom. Close them of the neckline and just really never looking back. Uh, just a slow grind higher and just really ripping from there. So realistically, if I'm checking this thing out, Long-term moving averages, I mean, the 100, we trade right down to it on the weekly, right? Buy off the big blue line. That's the strategy that I talked to a lot of kids about um, during kids months, and that was a nice little support. So if we pull back down to that level and start retesting 137-ish, looks good. Okay, DocuSign. So one of my least favorite stocks, not a huge fan of DocuSign. Here's the weekly time frame and DocuSign just sideways it's pretty much it sideways for now we had a new low on DocuSign right here uh, here's the retest gap so we got down retesting and today's Thursday so you have an inside not an inside sorry just like a high wave indecisive candle so if it breaks lower or breaks higher this is probably the candle you're gonna find out that information uh, right now we're trading sideways doing its thing Here's the daily chart on DocuSign, and the daily chart looks a squeamishly a bit more bearish. But if you get a good gap up on DocuSign, that could be really nice. Um, so the interesting thing is, since the earnings are coming out on DocuSign, the volume that came in today, up big. So my boy Rob and Lennon uh, are talking about it. What's very interesting is you're up 21% on DocuSign, and more than that, you had a lot of bears that came in recently. So gapping up to 56 is a big deal. 56, yeah, that's pretty nice. I like that gap. Uh, I mean, we're talking massive, massive move. Here's the lower high. I don't think it fades that hard, but it could. <laughs> that's funny so these two blue lines I have on the screen just randomly drawn this was a great pre-market resistance and a perfect pre-market support that's so weird how those things work right Brad anyway uh, good looking move looks nice we'll find out how this plays out Rob says did they announce they cured cancer or something 21% is crazy Apparently, man, all you got to do is sign some documents and you are cancer free. I think that was the news release actually on DocuSign. So we're up big and I think it could hit 60 um, over the next two or three days, most likely. I mean, this is a very, very strong gap. It really, really, really is. And I have, um, I have poo-pooed uh, Dropbox, but I've never really discarded DocuSign, I just feel like they're a good buyout candidate. I don't actually know if it's gonna happen, but if you do use DocuSign, DocuSign, you probably should have some shares of this thing. 
So DocuSign, I think, is a great buyout candidate for in, Intuit or Adobe or some of these like office program companies. Uh, maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't, but that's a beautiful, beautiful gap on DocuSign. Uh, I'd, lo I'd love to go to FinViz. I think that's what Matt's doing right now, probably pulling up DocuSign, some uh, analysis. He is that's right on cue and uh, trying to figure out like their earnings per share and their growth. They're probably doing quite well and yeah, strong revenue guidance, big gap. It'll be on my list tomorrow and we'll see how we play over the next two or three days. Okay, the big names. Amazon was a key winner for a lot of traders today. This was the exact setup on your screen that about 40 traders took today on Amazon. Yesterday, we played Amazon bullish and we lost. And I said yesterday, verbatim, I was like, guys, if we gap up, we're going to have to do it again. Going to have to do it again because it's just such a good setup. It looks nice. The trend looks nice. Um, I hope that uh, Lita, I know you were looking at Amazon to go long. I hope you got a chance to snag and grab some gains on that one. So really good gap on Amazon. Bearish candle, gapping up. It's a gap and go. Amazon's up 2%. Here's the five-minute chart and five-minute time frame. I mean, just crushed it. Uh, this was pretty classic, pretty normal. Bearish five-minute candle, a little bit of an upper shadow, a little bit of a lower shadow. We closed above it, we retested, and we continued higher. So nice-looking trade. That's a trade that my boy Thomas Wong would take any day of the week. Nice little move. Overall, um, big fan of what Amazon's going to do. And we've talked about this one a few times, but, I mean, mathematically, Amazon, if they just keep doing what they're doing, if they just stay on par, uh, they should double in the next year, just as far as revenues and just general overall stock performance is concerned. So I know a lot of people are picking up Amazon. Um, pretty healthy company. Their snowflake looks good. Trend looks good. By the day. All right, so Netflix. Netflix uh, scared some people today, and this is a phenomenal, phenomenal case study of what to do and how to practice. Um, this was, again, I've, you got the note right here, only look for bearish day trades, uh, swing trades on Netflix unless we got perfect. So that's why I didn't flip today. The, the rare instance that I followed my actual plan that I wrote down, um, it was uh, totally fine, not an issue at all. And I'm very, very pleased for how uh, both JL Musi and Felicia Jones and a few other traders played Netflix today. Uh, it was gorgeous. So we'll walk through it. This was gapping down when the whole market was gapping up, all right, on Netflix. So that's a big deal. So it was gapping down. The whole market was gapping up. Uh, Netflix was a gap and go. So you had a bullish candle yesterday gapping down. It was opening below the low of yesterday. It just had check mark after check mark after check mark. Here's the three minute chart on Netflix. Three minute chart, I mean, I pretty much still have the, uh, the setup drawn to an extent, uh, or maybe I don't. This is the three minute chart and just the absolute perfect trap. I mean, in hindsight, I can't see anything wrong with this trade. Like, look at this volume. Volume is good, it closes below the lower shadow, makes lower high, and then just, I mean, I was never even almost profitable in this trade. Like as soon as I got triggered in, it was just negative. Um, so here's the moving averages. And so really what happened is a lot of people played Netflix bearish with me, right? Getting in bearish here with a stop up here somewhere. And realistically, they just flipped. They flipped the scripts. They went bullish with a close above. It closed above, took out all those candles, trapped any of the bears, and Netflix popped, locked, and dropped it uh, for the bears. Netflix, daily chart, again, a little bit of a bullish candle. We'll still keep an eye on it. I still am going to keep this uh, this guy on here. All right, this plan. I'm going to, I'm going to keep that all available. Bob still has a put sale on Netflix. And if you have been or you are interested in uh, learning to sell puts or practicing selling puts, I know Philip and Anthony were looking at considering just kind of doing some practice. Uh, if you like Netflix and you potentially want to own Netflix, this would be an incredible buy low, sell high spot. You could consider a 220 Netflix put sale 
for some time in uh, October, November. And again, if you get put some shares down there, buy low, sell high. And if you don't, you make a little bit of money and you know, all is good. So Netflix on the daily chart, right? If it gaps up above the high of really the last three candles, so what would this be? So if Netflix gaps above 295 and a half tomorrow, I can massively consider going long. And if it gaps down, I might just keep an eye out for the bearish trade. Okay, Tesla, TSLA is still just hanging out for the most part. We will see. The question that I have to ask is when will I be wrong on this wave count? I don't know the answer to that. I think if Tesla closes above this candle and or this candle, then we'll have a little bit of an issue. So this candle, what do we got here? High of this candle is 231.50, 232.44. Yep, if we break above there, I think that's when I'm gonna be quote unquote wrong on this wave count, which I'm fine with being wrong on the wave count. That doesn't bug me. Um, I can live with that. But what I'm trying to get at is I got put sales on Tesla and I actually still randomly have this 285 call, but that's going to expire worthless. So yeah, sell volatility on Tesla long-term. A lot of people want to go higher. I'm all, I'm game for this thing to go higher. Um, anyone in the room has never, has anyone in here who's here live? Have you not dri test driven a Tesla? All right, so we got one, we got two, we got three. All right, we got four. So if you have one favor to another, put it on your list. In the next three weeks, just do it for me, just in case, just to do it, just so you can say you've done it, because it's fun, right? You, it's, uh, it's a different experience as far as driving is concerned. If you've never driven an electric rocket ship, consider it. All right, Tesla, cool, nice. Again, a really fun stock to do some put sales on. A lot of volatility on this bad boy. And, you know, worst case scenario, I think you could trade down to 170, but that's pretty much it. Rob says they are amazing cars, no doubt. Yeah, they kind of are. Mm, yep, that's really it. Okay. Next on the list is, what is this, Papa John's? Yeah, that garlic sauce. Papa John's. So my analysis on Papa John's has been simple. If you eat pizza and you like it, buy long-term down here. This is the buy off of the blue line strategy. Right, Papa John's, I mean, again, you can't be in everything, but this stock is down 50% in the last two years. It's consolidating, it's accumulating. Volume is picking up. Volume is coming in. People are buying some pizzas. So if you like pizza, and this, I mean, this could be a one that you can just start legging into. Right? JL came up with a good quote today. If you, if you want to start, you got to start. So if you want to start accumulating shares of pizza, this could be one that you can just at least consider. Good gaps, good volume, nice little move. Mm. If the 100 simple on a weekly wasn't right here, like right on top of where we were, I would consider this trade nicely for a swing trade. Because I do like the gap up. But I'll keep waiting. All right, next on the list, Bud Weiser. So Budweiser, uh, slowly coming back to life for me. Uh, this thing has taken forever. But right now, I got the January 2020 $120 call sold on Budweiser. And very slim chance that I get called away up there. I'm not going to buy this one back, I don't think. Unless in the next two or three days or weeks I can buy it back or like pennies on the dollar. But everyone here knows how Budweiser makes money. Everyone who's listening knows how Budweiser makes money. Sue. 100 simple moving average is at 91.96. Let me show you this monthly chart. Monthly chart, the 100 simple moving average is at 92.03. And again, a really nice long term. If you're buying, 
what, what's, what's the phrase? If you ain't buying, you're dying. So long-term moving average down here, buy low, sell high, hold for long enough, and you'll probably make money on Budweiser. Better to be an owner than just a consumer. NVIDIA, oh my goodness. I'm pumped up on NVIDIA. I'm stoked about this, guys. I'm straight up jacked. This is great. Raise your hand if you got a position in NVIDIA here in the live room. All right, we got one. Nice. All right, we got one person. That's good. Um, well, shoot, I didn't raise my hand. Uh, it's two. So I, I do have long calls on NVIDIA. They're leaps. Uh, this pink line, this was Mr. Squiggles. Uh, this is my, my thoughts on worst case scenario. And worst case scenario kind of played out to like medium case scenario. Because we did pull back to the exact time that Mr. Squiggles thought we would bounce, and then we did bounce, and then we did rotate lower, and then we did bounce higher again. So in hindsight, it's not a bad Mr. Squiggles. So anyway, uh, the trend's looking good. Bob has a put sale for December. Scott McKay did some covered call sales at 200, right? Philip has some shares of NVIDIA, and he's looking at doing some covered calls. And the weekly 100 simple moving average is at 201.91. Uh, Mike says, if I get called away on Apple tomorrow, NVIDIA, here we come. All right. So the question is, Mike, I believe a birdie told me that if you get called away on Apple, you'll be profitable. That's just what a birdie told me. I don't know if, it's, I don't know if that birdie is correct. But anyway, this is a beautiful gap on NVIDIA. I know Donnie Baldwin and the Baldwin team, a lot of traders in on NVIDIA, just longer term. Moving averages have fully crossed over. Volume is looking good. And at this point, it is a slow race to 200. Buy dips, own NVIDIA, looks great. Okay, next on the list is Apple. And Mike said, birdies don't lie. So what's your uh, strike price on your calls, Mike? 210? I know you post about it in Slack, but I just didn't read the entire post. Uh, I just skimmed through it and was like, hey, awesome. <laughs> I didn't actually really read what you said. Donnie said he made two R's on NVIDIA today. Donnie, get you some. All right, cool. Oh, very nice, very nice. So Mike says it was 212.50. I love that strike, man. That's beautiful. So what I'm going to do, Mike, is throw that one on the list for you on Friday because uh, I'm really excited, man. That's a great, great call. Very pretty. Uh, oops, give me one second. Okay. What do we got here? Uh, give me one second. What am I doing? Friday. UDD, what is UDD? I had to type that in wrong. PDD and then Under Armour. Okay, so Apple on the list for tomorrow for Mike. I like that cover call. Let me just jot it down here so that it helps me remember. Uh, 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 uh. Cover calls. I'm just going to say MR. That'll help me remember. And again, I do like that strike price. And honestly, man, I kind of hope you don't get called away. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I hope you do get called away. I mean, if you get called away, good profit, make your gain, and you can do it again, either on Apple or NVIDIA. And again, it's just hanging out at this resistance. Uh, Philip, do you have any shares of Apple? He says, yes, do you have enough to do a covered call? <laughs> he has so many, he doesn't know. <laughs> I like that. So it uh, looks like, Philip, you got another stock you can do a covered call on Apple right at that resistance, and there ain't no way you can't get called away to make money on Apple. You don't, you don't go through my videos and be in on Apple above 216, I don't think. So anyway, it looks good. Trend looks good. Overall, I think it's going to go a little bit higher, and Scott has a put sale at 185, which is like free money. Okay, Apple, done. Next on the list, Facebook. Facebook is running, right? I like Facebook long-term. They own Instagram, they own WhatsApp. Again, it's just gonna be a little bit of a slower grind uh, higher. 
you had a one white soldier from the heavens yesterday, and then you got this just absolutely fantastic gap. Um, Philip's going to back trade Facebook today as well. Um, nice little gap up, one hundred simple, a little bit of resistance. Oh boy! I mean, look at look at this invert head and shoulders pattern. Boom, boom, bam. So invert head and shoulders, neckline, buy the dip, and rock and roll from there. That's my thoughts on Facebook. That's what I got. And here is the monthly chart. So the monthly chart looks good. Long term, Facebook is in a distribution phase, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, they are FANG. They're the beginning of FANG. Fang was created because of Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg, genius. You can hate him or not like him or do like him, but we break out this distribution phase. Uh, Facebook hits 300 and I just don't know when. All right, so Facebook looks kind of cool, doing its thing, can make some good money on Facebook. It is Transportation Thursday after all. Here's Neo, the chosen one, and this stock, Uh, this stock is worth about as much as a box of Cracker Jacks. Not doing very much at all. Doesn't look very good at all. I tried to take a trade on this one and it did not work out for me. So if you are playing Neo, and I, I could take another stab at it. I'm not afraid. Let me see what the low of this candle is. So the low of this candle is 257. The low of this candle is 258. Ah, I was hoping it was 256. Just one penny lower would have been really nice. Mm. I mean, unfortunately, seeing what Neo has done in the past, I'm assuming it's going to do this, right? People buy, and then they get stopped out, and then it bounces. Maybe. Probably chops in here for a while. So I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of Neo. Again, they are doing their best impression of a furnace burning fire. So... Right now, fundamentals don't look great. Being patient on Neo, no position on that one for me, waiting it out. Let's go look at HIMX. HIMX, HIMAX technology, weekly chart, downtrend, monthly chart. Wow. What does this stock do? Is this a weed? Is this an alternative harvesting? Nope, this is a semiconductor. Well, it looks like no one's buying their stuff. Man, this thing is down. Again, that's why it's important to know what a company does. I mean, I'm not saying that this is a bad company, but I am saying that this chart looks like death. Um, but I've been known to squeeze out a move on a cheap stock once or twice in my day. It's not a penny stock, it has good volume. The thing is, I have to wait um, 18 hours because that's just one of my rules for swing trades. I don't think this triggers anyway, but depending on what the candle does today and tomorrow, well, not today, today's already done. Depending on what the candle does tomorrow on HiMax technology, I will be looking for a little pop, lower shadow, and then a bullish play on HIMX. So I'll write that down for tomorrow. Possible swing trade, because again, I want to be in and out making those guns. Zach, my man. That's a great question. So Zach, who is here in the live audience, says, would you wait for a close by the line or just a break above? So right now, I would just look for a break above that line. Um, my thought process is if we hang out and do something like this tomorrow and throw a little bit of a lower shadow and just kind of chill, then I'm totally fine with a pop above that line uh, as a quick, fast entry. So that's a great question. You are right, it is in a bearish trend. And the reason I'm even considering going long is just because you have this hammer and then a massive bullish candle. So if we do get some sort of buying and this could be a one, two, three, four, five, something like that. Not saying we make a lot, but we could make a quick little trade. And it's a fantastic question, Zach. Thank you for asking. Next on the list is Starbucks Arenos. Boys and girls, those pumpkin spice lattes are coming around the corner. 
All right, pumpkin spice is all the life. Here's the weekly chart. Look at this pennant pattern on Starbucks. So this is the weekly chart. Starbucks probably, again, at this point, a better uh, company to own more than trade, I think. I could be mistaken about that, right? But it's going to take its time. It's going to do its thing. It won't be massively exciting, but just a slow little, you know, traverse higher. Yep, trend looks good. Moving averages look good. Uh, Robin says options are fun. Absolutely. If you're day trading this one or, you know, actively very quickly in and out swing trading it, day trading it, totally. This thing has some fun moves. Did you play it today, Robin? And if so, how'd you do in general on the day? Robin, Robin says she did not play it today, which is totally cool. No big deal. Um, yeah. I would just like Starbucks to trade sideways a little bit longer. But if you're in bullish, I mean, stay bullish. The trend is your friend. Robin says, in general, cleaned up the market, just like you. <laughs> That's why they call me the janitor. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, here's AT&T. AT&T uh, did gap up today. and. True story, I got my nephew's girlfriend into this stock. That's how much I care about investing, ladies and gentlemen. Um, her name is Daisy, and she has an AT&T cell phone plan. And I was like, she came up and visited me the other day, and I was like, Daisy, you've got a job, right? She's like, yeah. I'm like, you make money, don't you? Yeah. You live with your parents anyway. Where you sit, aren't you saving up some money? Yeah. Open up a Robinhood account right now. She's like, what's Robinhood? I'm like, I'm about to show you. So I like hand forced her to open up this account, made her link a brokerage or a bank account. Um, so she's been in since like here. So not bad, but you know, it's AT&T. There's nothing sexy about it. It's a blue chip. We know how they make money. You probably have a AT&T cell phone plan, but yeah, slowly but surely it's been grinding higher. So anyway, not that you're listening at all, Daisy, but just, I guess, out in the ether of the universe. Congrats on AT&T. Well played. And uh, Anthony would have liked to make 10% off that trade. He could have crushed that right there. Buy at 32, sell at 35. That's $3 all day, all day, all day. Uh, speaking of phone companies, we are in a bullish options trade on Verizon. Ticker symbol VZ. Oh, I tried twice and failed twice. All right, let's try that one more time. Verizon looks good. Robin, you better be in this trade. This is right up your alley, girlfriend. October 57.50 call, $1.60 limit buy. It, uh, it filled twice, August 29th and September 3rd. I like the gap up today. I really like the high wave candle that we got yesterday. I like the close. Uh, we're in this to win this. It closed up 0.7%. That's a nice looking weekly candle. And right now I don't have a target on it, but I think we'll probably end up just locking in one R on Verizon. I don't have massive hopes for this one. Could be wrong, but you know, anyway, that's what I got on Verizon. It's not too bad. Bristol Myers Squibb, BMY. So my buddy Charles March is in some BMY and he's just, praying for this thing to eventually go on higher. Here's your monthly chart. And I mean, all I can say on BMY is regarding, regarding it going lower, this is the spot where it shouldn't. I don't trade pharmaceuticals, but here's your low. Very, very obvious pocket of liquidity. And it just comes right in here and throws in a bunch of lower shadows, lower wicks pops into the stop area. A lot of people get both stopped out and uh, wicked out, and then they start going long on some positions. So if you're in, Chuck, I like it. I dig it. I know you're in bullish, and I hope it starts bouncing on here. I think it will. This is a realistic, normal location for it to start to bounce. And the daily chart doesn't look bad, ma'am. I do like today's candle. So you got to gap up. This is actually a – wow, this is a pretty strong move. 
Yeah, that's a really, really nice looking candle pattern. Morning Star Reversal, 10 out of 10, would trade again right there. Boom, boom, boom. And you got a little bit of a hammer with an upper shadow. If this doesn't trigger between today and tomorrow, I think I could take that trade. All right. There we go. Bristol Myers got it down. All right. Next on the list. So BMY. Next on the list is VFF. VFF. Village Farms International. I don't know if I've ever heard of this company. Ah, uh, can't. What's that? Okay, all right. So Zach is saying here in the live retreat room, which is epic, by the way, uh, the VFF Village and Farms International is a cannabis play, aka alternative harvesting, and that he got into this particular position makes sense to me. Uh, so this is the daily chart, and really just looking at it, what I like about it is you got this higher low. So here's a low, here's a higher low, here's a lower low where we got a little bit of a bounce, didn't quite get to the 200 simple moving average, but it got close. And then you get another low with almost quite coming into the 200 simple moving average, not quite getting there, and then it starts to bounce. So I get it. Um, realistically, I mean, you have one of two things, and this is gonna be relatively easy. Uh, you're either gonna get a quick drop back down into the 200 to test it one more time and bounce, or you break out and start moving higher pretty soon. I don't think there's any other alternative. So we'll see. Either one's cool for me, but going bullish in this position makes sense. Here's the weekly chart. Weekly chart looks good. Moving averages look good. 50 EMA looks good. So be patient. Give it some time. I like it. All right. We just got a few more on the list. LAM Research has been the opposite of silent. Here's the daily chart. And LAM Research gapping up again. My boy Thomas is target on this one. 280. And Robin got that joke. Thanks, Robin. Sometimes my jokes go above people's heads. Um, Lamb, Lamb Research was a nice gap, right? So NVIDIA gapped up. Uh, AMD was up. A lot of the, you know, that semiconductor technology, Micron, those companies were up nicely. Lamb Research up another 2%. Really good move. And the previous all-time high is 234.88. So, again, uh, Thomas, you're welcome to kind of just kind of keep your eye out and consider some 240 or 250 covered calls before earnings. Because after earnings, man, who knows? This monthly chart looks nice and comfy, and 280 is a very, very realistic target. So well done. Um, that's all I have to say on LAM Research. Square had a really killer move today. Uh, Square had a good gap up. So most of the markets did have some good, some good gaps today. And this one did follow the plan really nicely of that 30 minute moving average. It gapped up uh, above the moving average. Here's the five minute 105 EMA on square. And here it is. And uh, again, we never quite hit it, but you, if you used it, it would have been a good pool, uh, tool. So entry there, stop loss down here, would have worked for two R's. Entry anywhere over here, stop anywhere over here. It would have worked for an hour and a half. Not a bad trade on Square at all. So the daily time frame looks good. Decent gap looks good. I like it. So if I turn this back on, I'm going to leave it back on because I know a lot of people have Square shares, leaps. It's a good company. Buy low, sell high. I like it. We're going to have to give it some time. But I do think this gap fills. Right on the daily chart. I think this cap eventually fills. This is the chart with the 105 EMA on it, on the weekly chart, if anyone's interested. Kind of random, but you know, again, it doesn't look bad. All right, that's square. Buy low, sell high. Got three left. GE, General Electric. Hmm. 
Robin says, is the 105 posted in Slack? It is not. No, nope, it's not yet. I mean, you're welcome to reach out to anyone to the retreat. They can share some information with you, but no, it's not posted right now. John says, going to empty on General Electric? Probably. This is, oh, shoot. I did not see this pattern in time. This is a beautiful pattern. So gap down, makes a new, you know, new low probably, huge volume. Trades into a support. Yep, we've been here before. So trades into a support, bounces. Uh, so Thomas, if you want to just back trade this one on a daily chart, just for kind of practice of that climactic reversal that we talked about today. Uh, you got the really, really, really big sell off, the bounce, the secondary rotation, and then that little entry. So the way I would have played it, I would have liked to think, is once this candle came in, uh, I would probably have tried entry here, stop there. Um, once this candle came in, would have moved the stop to here, and would have gotten out of everything there for uh, 1.8, 1.7 hours, something like that. So GE, I don't really have anything else to talk about it on realistically. I mean, here's the weekly chart, and the weekly chart, uh, it, it is a higher low. So the big question that Wall Street is asking is will General Electric buy off of this level? And I think the answer is yes, that it easily could. I do think General Electric is gonna go to zero or at least lower, but it's gonna take some time before that happens. Nice morning star reversal on a weekly chart, looks kind of cute. And here's the monthly time frame on GE. I dig it. So again, I'm not saying this is gonna be a long-term investment, but it could be one that you at least just generally keep your eyes peeled on for some sort of actual move. All right, Tandem Diabetes, TNDM. Tandem. Well, um, I'm trying to remember what I liked about this trade. This is the weekly chart, weekly charts. Uh, let's see here. I mean, again, we've looked at it a few times. The trend looks bullish. This thing has some direction to go. I don't think I'm gonna get a chance to take this setup, but if it trades sideways another day or two, I, well, specifically if it trades sideways tomorrow, most likely gonna have to take this, this trade right here. That trade's gonna need to get taken right about there. Yeah, okay, I'll put it on the list for tomorrow. Again, we got out of one of our swing, uh, swing trades today, so we have room um, to take some more and start adding to our risk. Check out Shake Shack, ladies and gentlemen. So Shake Shack, um, again, this is one that over here, this blue line, this blue line, Right here, when we were breaking out, I said, all right, guys, we're going to 100 and some change. That was $30 ago. Mentioned Target late 2020. I hate being off. Man. Like, how dumb can you get? It was, it was mid to late 2019. I was off by a year. That is brutal. I thought I was better than that. It just ran so quickly. I mean, I knew it was getting there, but whew, milkshakes. Who would have thought? That, that's, <laughs> that's what Anthony said. I mean, can't argue that premise. So uh, I, I will say this is – this chart right here is going to be used in so many of my Dow theory classes and teaching children and just adults. I mean, about accumulation. And then you have the accumulation, breakout, retest, public participation, wave structure. Then you have a one, two, three, four, five wave down, secondary retest of the breakout level. Oh, I mean, just Dow Theory 101, Shake Shack, murdering it. So, I mean, I don't know, guys. Don't buy right now, but look to be buying some dips. Okay, just another quick review of some of our other swing trades that we're in. Slumberjay, 
is not slumbering. This thing was good. 3480 was the high of the day. I would have liked to have gotten out at 3480 because um, we're, I mean, this is right around two hours, ladies and gentlemen. We got flooded the exact low. We did break the high of yesterday's candle, and so I'm going to try to hold this trade for a little bit longer. That's going to be my attempt. So pick on how we close today. I mean, we got triggered in on this trade, and it just started running. So I'm going to try for this gap fill. That would be so good. So that's 37.33 is the target on Slumberjay. Um, I doubt we get there, but here's what I'm going to do. I'll write it in the notes. Target before nine. I'm just going to pick a random day in September. Uh, 9.19. So if we don't hit this price before 919, then I'm gonna increase the stop, flex a little bit, exit some partials, but I'm gonna try to hold this one. Um, updated, well, sorry, just I haven't had a target at all. Target on SLB swing trade. So I challenged a real life trader today to do their best to hold for a nice, nice, to our winner in the month of September. I'm gonna try to do the same on Slumberjay because two R's is 35.76. So this is another $2 plus we got filled at like 50 cents lower than expected. So that could be realistically almost a four R trade. I'll take that. That would be really, really nice. So let's find out Slumberjay, that's it. Uh, another nice little cute winner that we got going on out there from the weekly options newsletter, Under Armour, UAA is up solidly. So this is good. I mean, we got triggered in yesterday and this gap was sensational today. You could not have asked for a better gap. So we got October. I mean, I don't know what to do on this thing. I will say the 50 would be a nice target. Um, there is definitely the chance that if tomorrow or Monday or Tuesday of next week, if I need to exit Slumberjay, Under Armour, and Verizon to all lock in a little bit of a gains uh, to put me up for the month of September, depending on how tomorrow day trading goes, I could do that. So I have the ability to do that. I'm not saying I will, but I'm saying if I do, I'll let everyone know um, because those trades are doing pretty well right now. The trade that's not doing pretty well, pin duo duo. So you're talking about PDD, All right? Try calling the top and the top is not in yet. So the good news is those puts aren't really going down that much. They are definitely going down, but it's not terrible because implied volatility is kind of picking up a little bit. And uh, I mean, it's just like, okay, when are you gonna pull back a little bit? So again, this trade most likely gonna be a very small win or a very small loss, I'm hoping. I don't think it's gonna be a full R loss. I mean, pin duo do it, have to hit like 38 for that option to be worth 25 cents. But it's possible, anything's possible. So PDD only subpar right now. Uh, not looking that exciting, but I did want to have at least one bearish trade. Going into it, I absolutely knew that it was counter trends and it was only, again, like an adequately okay setup. So we got that one. Canadian Solar is trading very sideways. It's feeling very sorry about trading sideways for this long. Here's the daily chart, and I'm looking at taking a breakout and adding to it at 2402 if it happens. If it doesn't, I'm gonna get stopped out on a half an hour entry at 2179, which would make this like a 0 0.3 R loss, and I would just throw Canadian Solar um, in the trash can, that'd be that. So we'll find out if that does it. Right now, it's a very, very, very small loser, and I can live with that, no problem. ZTO is still open. 
but it's just running without us. So I'll I'll cancel that one on DTO. I mean, we tried. We tried. Okay, so ZTO is canceled. Fiverr, which is ticker symbol FVRR. So Fiverr, we have opened, but I don't think this is gonna trigger. Um, so we're gonna cancel this one, and we'll come back and look at it tomorrow. All right, Fiverr, FVRR. So we will look at that one tomorrow, but we will cancel this exact setup for now. Okay, we cancel Fiverr, and then the only other swing trade that is open is KRUS Sushi, and KRU Sushi looks really beautiful. Still like this one, still open, still set up. Looks even better after today, realistically. So, Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations for those who were able to trade profitably today and really just uh, dominated. That's beautiful stuff. Tomorrow is Finance Friday. Uh, we can literally look at anything you want. If you want to look at a finance stock, you're more than welcome to. But for those who want, what would you like to check out in the afternoon swing trading room? Here's what I have on the list so far. Again, maybe we set up some new swing trades tomorrow. Um, anything else, boys and girls, that you guys want to check out? Roku makes sense. I could see why you'd want to look at that one. Roku done on the list. Beautiful. All right. TLT done. US Steel done. Pinterest. Yeah. In phase energy. JP Morgan. Wonderful. I robot, yeah, that'll be a great one. Ooh, Baba had a beautiful gap today. Baba done and done. All right, team. Thank you so much for being with me here in the Transportation Thursday afternoon swing trading room. Uh, for those who are here watching the recording or here live, thank you for your time. And for those who are here live in the flesh, thank you for your time. And until next time, love life, live life and trade it.